This presentation examines the uniform distribution. So here's how the uniform distribution works. We're going to pick between two numbers A and B and the curve is flat and the height of the curve is 1 over B minus A. Why is that? You'll notice the width is B minus A and the height is 1 over B minus A. So the area of this rectangle is 1 and for it to be a probability distribution function the entire area under the curve must be 1. So that's the idea that we need to use as we build the pictures of the uniform distribution. So here's an example. We have x, a uniform distribution, defined on the interval from 10 to 30. We want to find the probability that x is less than 15. If we're going from 10 to 30, our width of that rectangle will be 20. And we have to think about what the height is going to be so that the area is 1. So we got x is uniform from 10 to 30, and our question is, what is the probability x is less than 15? So here's our picture. We're going from 10 to 30. The width of this is 20. We want the area to equal 1, so the height is going to have to be 1 20th. Height of the rectangle is 1 20th. Area is 1. That will enable that to be a probability distribution function. Now we want the probability x is less than 15. How are we going to do that? We're going to label 15 on the graph, and we're going to shade everything that is less than 15. And certainly nothing goes below 10, since the function is only defined on the interval from 10 to 30. And the probability that x is less than 15 is going to be this area. So the question is, what is the area of that shaded rectangle? What we get is the probability x is less than 15 is the width of the shaded rectangle, 5, times the height of the shaded rectangle, 1 20th to give us the probability that x is less than 15 is going to equal 1 fourth. Okay, next we're going to look at a mini-tab simulation, and we usually like to use 10,000 numbers. That's pretty manageable. So we're going to say random 10,000 numbers put in C1. It's going to come from a uniform distribution starting at 10 and ending at 30. We want to sort those numbers so that in C2 those numbers will be in order from lowest to highest. So we have our data. Again, you'll notice I erased what was there previously. Random 10,000 C1, uniform 1030, sort C1, C2. And we are interested in how many of our numbers are less than 15. So I'm going to scroll through C2 and I'm going to find out how many of them are indeed less than 15. You'll notice I'm at 14.93 now. And what do we have? This is my last one, less than 15. We have 2,480 of the 10,000 numbers less than 15. So we'll put a little note up top and we'll say the probability that x is less than 15 is approximately how much? What did we say? 2,480 out of 10,000 numbers in our simulation which of course is equal to 0.2480 And we see that this 0 0.2480 number is pretty close to our theoretical answer of 0 0.25. We only did 10,000 trials. If we had done a million trials instead, the law of large numbers tells us that there's a pretty good chance that our relative frequency would be closer to the theoretical probability. Okay, let's take a look at another question. Here we're going to say x is uniformly distributed on the interval from 0 to 50. We want to find the following. The probability x is less than 30. The probability x is greater than 40. The probability x is between 10 and 48. And the probability x equals 25. So if we're looking at this, we have a uniform distribution over 0 to 50. So the width of that interval will be 50. We've got to think about what the height will have to be. The area underneath the rectangle has to equal 1. So if the width is 50, the height is going to have to be 1 50th so that the area underneath the entire rectangle is 1. Once we've established the height, then we can ask our question, what is the probability x is going to be less than 30? So we're going to identify 30 on the chart here. We're going to label 30, and we're going to shade everything to the left of 30. And the probability that x is less than 30 is going to equal the area under the curve, or the shaded part of the rectangle. 
Well, luckily, determining that area is relatively easy. The probability x is less than 30 would simply be the width of that rectangle, 30, times the height of that rectangle, 1 50th, giving me 30 over 50, or 0 0.6. So the probability x is less than 30 in this case is simply 0 0.6. For our next question, we're going to look at the probability x is greater than 40. So to do this, we're going to identify 40 on the rectangle and that we're going to shade everything to the right. We want the probability x is greater than 40. And what will that give us? Well, you can see from 40 to 50, the width here is 10. The height of the rectangle is 1 50th. So that probability is the area of that rectangle, width times height, 10 times 1 50th, 10 50th, which of course reduces to 0.2. Our next question is the probability x is between 10 and 48. So what will that look like? Again, we have a rectangle, 10 on this side, 48 on that side, very close to 50. And to find our probability, we've got to find the shaded area. So to do that, what are we going to look at? From 10 to 48, the width of this rectangle is 38. The height of this rectangle is 1 50th. So we have 38 times 1 50th, 38 out of 50, which is 0.76. And then our next question is the probability x equals 25. And how are we going to do that? Well, again, we need to do width times height. But if we draw our rectangle, we want the probability x equals 25. The width of this rectangle is 0. The height of this rectangle is 1 50th. So this is what our theory tells us. The probability x equals 25 has to be 0. Now, how does this make sense? The uniform distribution is continuous. So 25 would mean 25.0000000 forever. The likelihood of getting 25 point an infinite number of zeros is indeed zero. So let's take a look at a mini tab simulation for this data. Again, we're going to say random 10,000 C1 semicolon, uniform zero through 50, and we want to put those guys in order, so we're going to say sort C1, C2. So here's our data. We've done that. Probability 10,000, C1, uniform 0, 50, sort C1, C2. And the question that I want to know is, what is the probability x is less than 30 approximately by using this data? Probability x is less than 30 is approximately what? So we have to count to see how many of the numbers in C2 are less than 30. So I'm going to scroll through the data set. I'm going to look to see how many of these things are indeed less than 30. You'll see I'm at 29.9996. And what do I have? How many of mine are less than 30? I have 5958 out of 10,000. So we'll write 5958 out of 10,000, which equals 0.5958. Okay, the next question we'll choose to answer is the probability x is greater than 40, approximately. So how are we going to do that? I'm just going to make a little note up here. We're going to count how many of our numbers are indeed bigger than 40. And see if it's close to the answer that we had before. Certainly our 30 number is very close to what we had before. So I'm going to scroll through the data set and I'm going to find out how many are greater than 40. And let's see, it looks like 7,968 are not greater than 40, so I've got to take 10,000 minus 7,968. And that's 2032 out of 10,000. 2032 out of 10,000, which is about 0 0.2032. And we'll do one more as long as we're doing our check. Let's take a look at the probability x equals 25. So how many numbers in our list exactly equal 25? So if we scroll through it, what do we find? How many are exactly 25? And here's a relevant part of the list, 24.9995 and 25.0007. And in fact, it's a lot more decimal places than that. None of them. So indeed, that's going to equal zero.